What is up, down and sideways, you lovely individuals? We are back. It's League Unlocked. My name is Eric, and thank you all for joining us today as we have two weeks left in the regular season of the LCS Summer Split. So I thought today's a good time to do a little check-in, peek around, and see who really are the front runners for MVP for this split. Because truthfully, Power rankings are getting a little bit dry when four of the teams are one and four and the top three seems like the only squads that really matter or have any expectations for this point. So obviously one of the MVPs is going to be from one of those top three teams, barring some miracle run uh, from some of these other squads. But who are the guys who are maybe most integral, having the best individual performances on these respective top tier squads? And we would begin with who I think is the front runner of the front runners and that is Mr. Yapton America himself APA the Ziggs one trick turned potential MVP candidate that just has a pretty dang nice ring to it doesn't it overall I mean he's got the case with MVPs you got to pass the eye test you got to pass the stats test this guy is featured a lot in Team Liquid Comps seeing as he has the highest gold and kill percentage of not just mid laners, but anybody in the league. Uh, obviously, he's got twice as many solo kills as anybody else, and he is not just doing it on Ziggs as we piloted. He is undefeated on that pick and has almost a 10 KDA on Ziggs, but we've seen him pilot the 80 carry meta to pretty dang good success, both the Corky and Tristana, the highlights. He's even pulled out a Cassiopeia, which he was also getting solo kills on, but the growth and evolution of APA in still such a short career. It's not like this guy has even played for two years. It's barely even one full year that he's been the bona fide starter for Team Liquid and seeing this ascension all the international experience that he's gotten in his, again, very early career. But he has been dominant in lane, dominant outside of lane, dominant roaming with Team Liquid. He has been the featured guy on this TL lineup and is one of the main reasons why we've seen this level up from the team as a whole since that spring split LCS title that we saw them level up to. So right now, APA... I think it's a standout performer on the standout team in the LCS. If you pivot over to the Cloud9 side of things, I think there's two guys you could be making a case for. And listen, got to highlight Thanatos has been, if you're calling him a rookie, he's probably up there as one of the rookies of this split, maybe even the year, even though he's only played a single split. He has some absolutely disgusting uh, laning numbers. But if you're going MVP, it's either got to be Blabber or Berserker, two guys who are no strangers to picking up those MVP honors within the LCS. And I think Blabber, you could talk inspired in the same conversation as a best jungler. And truthfully, Cloud9 getting their head-to-heads against Team Liquid and FlyQuest to close things out. Pretty much those series, I think, are going to determine who the MVP of the split is in terms of who performs better in those marquee head-to-head matchups against the top, top cojones in the LCS. But when you're talking about Blabber, he has been incredibly dominant on... Uh, he's the only guy, I feel like, who's played in Italy to a high level in the LCS and been able to take over some games. But 63% first blood rate uh, in double-digit plus games now he's played in the LCS uh, this split, which is nutty to be above 50% is categorically uh, insane. So his early game numbers and almost... This guy's almost a thousand XP ahead at 15 minutes. So the pathing, the creative pathing that he does, it has always been a featured standout thing with this former MVP. I lean slightly towards Blabber if you had to give an MVP over uh, to somebody from Cloud9. Again, contingent on how their last couple of series go. But Berserker has been pretty damn good in his own right. Uh, 13 KDA. He basically has made zero mistakes so far and has fully looked like that. 2023 form berserker yes he is him uh who is old reliable as soon as this guy gets to two two and a half items on an 80 carry you just know the entire team has the confidence that he will be playing positioning perfectly around the majority of these team fights knowing exactly when to be aggressive to take things over all it took it seems like as soon as this guy plays a zary game it's like making a th free throw he just gets comfortable he sees a couple kills a couple bounties go his way and he's played several 
Zeri games uh, so far this split and has looked pretty amazing on all of them as we now have even with the double 80 carry meta we keep seeing all these mid laners stealing the attention from their respective uh, 80 carry actual mains but Hasn't been the case for Berserker there, and the reason Jojo Pian isn't in this conversation, he clearly, I think, has been the second best mid laner throughout the entirety of the summer split, but pretty much every series, he's getting caught out a little bit. He's the ultimate bait and switch for this Cloud9 roster, which honestly has fit them pretty perfectly to have a opposite of conservative mid laner uh, so far, always willing to be the guy at the forefront dying, even if he's a Tristana or a Corgi or an Azir, but because some of these uh, deaths have been completely unwarranted. Can't put him in that MVP conversation within Cloud9 when you have guys like Blabber and Berserker. Now, again, if FlyQuest gets a win against Cloud9 uh, in one of their final series and closes out, finishes with a better or at least tied for the same record, then you could maybe talk about somebody from them picking up MVP. And if it's going to be anybody, definitely think it's going to be inspired in this meta. Um, the consistency quad has been leveling up and been much more consistent over the last couple of weeks but inspired is definitely the engine that keeps this fly quest train running so if anyone would be picking it up from there 100 percent you would be talking about uh inspired in that category the, the one other guy i want to talk about uh because i think it's going to be team liquid or cloud nine but if you were to actually talk about most valuable and this argument always happens in traditional sports as well the mvp almost always comes from one of the best teams top seeded teams in the league it's just the best player on the best team but in terms of value only four games but by the end of the summer split i think you're talking about mr boogie in this conversation because the absolute flip that the shop five rebellion have had since he stepped into the lineup to replace tomio obviously the only one a single series but they immediately picked up a game and have looked leaps and bounds better probably gonna march their way to a playoff push i think they play against FlyQuest to close things out but in this day and age two and five might be good enough uh depending on your game score to get you in to the lcs playoffs so uh, we'll see if shopify is able to do that but not just uh the urgency that now shopify has in the early game they don't just wait for something to happen he's the guy making the plays especially on these carry champions Four games, I know, so the stats are a little skewed, but 28% of his team's damage as a jungler is laughably high. Uh, that's like 10% higher than what we're accustomed to seeing, and I know he played Brandon Zyra, so yes, that absolutely makes sense. It's more like he's playing carries at that point, because he is, but how Shopify looks on the Rift, and you've even heard multiple pros say Shopify looks so much better with Boogie, and they expect them to be a playoff team. They're taking scrims even off of the Team Liquid and Cloud Nines of the world. They probably weren't even scrimming Shopify when they were zero and four, it looked absolutely abysmal. So in terms of impact and value to a team, Boogie might actually be the most valuable because he could save an entire season. And either way, he's not gonna win MVP, but you could be, I'd be slotting him much like B-Boy we did a couple splits ago, even on a meddling, not even playoff team. He could be all pro. You could be slotting him right behind Blabber and Inspired and maybe steal that third team all pro. That's how good he's been through these first four couple of games. But uh, at least for the for the moment, if you were beyond MVP and putting together a first team all pro squad, pretty sure it would make up entirely Team Liquid and Cloud9. Um, I, I mean, you could argue maybe top support. Are you putting Impact? Are you putting Thanatos? Are you putting Vulcan? Or are you putting Core JJ? Those are kind of the arguments, but 100% so far, it has been all Team Liquid and all Cloud9. And whoever wins MVP this split, it's going to be decided in the last week or two, probably depending on how Cloud9 specifically does uh, in that head-to-head -head against Team Liquid. Whoever's winning that series and whoever stands out is probably going to be the one taking home MVP honors in the summer split. Either way, I'm just happy to have three teams that you're actually excited about for the LCS and maybe even excited about to see perform on an international level. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric, as always, and thank you to all you lovely individuals around the globe for hanging out with us and checking out the show. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.